Hi everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We have a great guest coming in remotely from LA, Christian Hernandez, developer experience lead at CodeFresh, CodeFresh IO. Recently they were on our uh, featured AWS Startup Showcase Series, season two, episode one, the cloud data innovations, open source innovations, all good stuff. Christian, thanks for coming on this CUBE conversation. Thank you, thank you, John. Thank you for having me on. You know, I'm, I was really impressed with CodeFresh when I met with the founders on here on theCUBE because GitOps, AI, everything is something ops. DevOps, DevSecOps, you got AI ops, you got now GitOps. Essentially operationalizing the software future is here and software's eating the world as was written many years ago. But it's open source is now all software. All things software is open source. And that's kind of a done deal. It's only getting better and better. Mainstream companies are contributing. You guys are on this wave of, of this open source tsunami and you got cloud scale, automations right there, machine learning, all this stuff is now the next gen of, of, of code, right? So you, you're at CodeFresh and your title is developer experience lead. What does that mean right now? What does yeah. it mean to be a developer experience lead? Like you make sure people are having a good experience, are you developing, you figuring yeah. out the product, what does that mean? Yeah, that's and it's also part of the the whole DevRel explosion that's happening right now. I believe um, it's uh, you know everyone's always asking, well, what you know, what is developer advocate? What does that mean? Developer experience? What does that mean? So, um, so you you kind of hit the nail on the head a little bit up there in in the beginning is that um, the the experience of the developer when using a particular platform, right? Especially the CodeFresh platform, um, that is my responsibility there at CodeFresh to enable. Um, uh, to enable end users, to enable partners, to enable um, um, you know anyone that wants to use the CodeFresh platform for their CI/CD and GitOps workflows. So that's that's really my um, uh, my corner of the world is to make sure their experience is great. So that's um, it, it's really what, um, what what I'm here to do at CodeFresh. You know, one of the things I can say of my career, you've been kind of I've become a historian over time. When I was a developer back in the old days, it was simply you compiled stuff, you did QA on it, you packaged it out, you went out the door, um, and you know that was a workflow, right? Now, with the cloud, I was talking with your founders. You got new abstraction layers. Cloud has changed again, again open source. So newer things are coming, right? Like like. Like Kubernetes, for instance, is a great example that came out of the open source kind of the innovations. But that, and Hadoop, we were mentioning before we came on camera from a storage standpoint, kind of didn't make it because it was just too hard, right? And it made the developer's job harder and then it made the developer's requirements to be specialized. So you had kind of two problems. You had hard to use, a lot of friction, and then it required certain expertise when the developers just want to code. Right, so, so you have now the motion of with GitOps, you guys are in the middle of kind of this idea of frictionless based um, software delivery with the cloud. So what's different now? Can you talk about that specific point? Because no one wants to be do hard work and have to redo things. Yeah, shift left and all that good stuff. What's hard now? What do you guys solve? What's the, what's the friction that you're taking out what's to become frictionless? Yeah, yeah, and you, you, you mentioned a very interesting point about how you know things that are coming out almost makes it seem harder nowadays uh, to develop an application you used to have it to where you know kind of a sort of a waterfall um, sort of workflow where you know you develop your code you know you compile it right you know I guess back in the day Java was king I think Java still is has a, has a large footprint out there um, where you would just compile it and deploy it if it works it works all right cool and you have it and you kind of just move it along in its process. Whereas um, I think the, the the whole idea of, I think Netflix uh, came out with like the, the fail often, fail fast, um, release often, you know, the whole Atlassian CICD thing, agile um, thing came into play where now it's, it's a little bit more complex to get your code out there delivered, to get your code from one environment to the other environment, especially with the, the advent of Kubernetes and cloud native architecture where you can um, deploy and have this immutable infrastructure where you can just deploy and automate uh, so quickly, so often that there needs to be some sort of new process now into place where um, to have uh, a, a new process like GitOps to where it'll it, it's frictionless, meaning that it's it, it makes it that process a little easier, makes that little that comp that complex process of deploying onto like a cloud native architecture um, easier. So that way, as you said before returning the developers to 
um, back to what they care about more the most is just code. I just want to code. Yeah. You know, the other thing, cool thing, Christian, I, I want to bring up, and we'll get into some of the specifics around Argo, specifically CD, is that the community is responding as a kind of, it takes a village kind of mindset. People are getting into this, just saying, hey, if we can get our act together around some de facto workflows and de facto capabilities, everyone wins. It's a rising tide floats all boats kind of concept. Uh, CNCF certainly has been a big part of that. You've even seen some of the big hyperscalers getting behind it. But you guys are part of the founding members of the Open GitOps working group. Amazon, Azure, GitHub, Red Hat, Weaveworks, and then a ton of contributors, okay? So this is kind of cool. This means that there's like people behind this saying, look, we got to get here faster. What happened at KubeCon this year? You guys had some news around Argo and you had some news around the hosted uh, solution. Can you take a minute to explain two things? One, the open community vibe, and then two, what you guys announced at KubeCon in Spain. Yeah, yeah, so as far as uh, open GitOps, that was, um, you know, as you said before, CodeFresh was part of that that founding um, um, committee, right, of a group of people trying to figure out, define what GitOps is, right? We're trying to bring it beyond the, um, um, you know, the, the hype word, right? Beyond just like a marketing term to where we actually define what it actually is, because it is actually something um, that's out there that people are doing, right? A lot of people, you know, remember that the the Chick-fil-A um, story where it's like, they, they are completely doing, you know, this GetOps thing. We're just now wanting putting a definition around it. So that was just amazing to see um, out, out there in, in KubeCon. And like you said, in KubeCon, we, you know, we're, we're, we're taking some of that, um, that acceleration that we see in the community um, to, and we, we announced our, our hosted GitOps offering, right? So hosted GitOps is something that our customers have been asking for for a while. Um, many times when you know someone wants to use um, something like Argo CD, they, ins they install it on their cluster, they get it up and running. Um, and, but with, with all that comes like the feed and care of that platform. And uh, you know, not only just keeping the lights on, but also management, security, you know, general maintenance, you know, all the things that, that come along with uh, managing a system. Um, and on top of that comes like the scale aspect of it, right? And so with scale, so a lot of people go with like a hub and spoke, others go with like a fleet design. Uh, in in either case, right? There's there's a challenge for the feed and care of it, right? And so uh, with CodeFresh hosted GitOps, uh, we take that management headache away. Right, so we we take the 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 management of of Argo CD, the management of of all of that, um, and kind of just offer Argo CD as a service, right? Which offers, um, you know, allows users to you know let us take care of all of the of the GitOps runtime, and so they can concentrate on you know their application deployments, right? And you also get things like Dora metrics, right, integrated with the platform. Um, you have the ability to integrate multiple CI providers, you know, like GitHub Actions or whatever existing Jenkins pipelines. And really that, that CodeFresh platform becomes like your GitOps platform becomes like, you know, your, your central view of the world of, of your, um, you know, GitOps processes. Yeah, I mean that whole single source of truth concept is really kind of needed. I got to ask you though, with the popularity of the Argo CD on uh, GitOps internally, right? That's been clear, right? Kubernetes, the way that's going, it's accelerating fast, people want simple, it's scaling, and you got automation built in, all that good stuff. What was the driver behind the hosted GitOps solution? Was it customer needs? Was it efficiency? All of the above? What was specifically, and and why would someone want to have the hosted versus say internal? Yeah, so it's uh, it was really driven by you know customer need. Right? It's been something that the customers have been asking for, and it's also been something that um, um, you know you 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 have a process of delivering an application to you know uh, you know a fleet of clusters. Um, in a traditional, you know, uh, I keep saying traditional GitOps practice, as if GitOps is so old. In, in, you know, yeah. in uh, you know, when 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 people first start out, they'll start you know installing Argo City on all these clusters um, and trying to manage that at scale. Um, it's it's it, it seemed like there was you know it, it'd be nice if we can just like be able to consume this as a service, so we don't have to like worry about um, you know you know best practices. We don't have to worry about security. We don't just all, all of that is taken care of and managed by us. Um, at CodeFresh. So this is like something that, you know, has been asked for um, and, and something that, um, you know, we believe will accelerate, um, you know, developers into actually developing their, their applications. They don't have to worry about managing the platform. So just getting this right, it's the hosted managed service by you guys on this one. 
Correct, yes. Okay, got it. All right, so let me let me get in the Argo real quick, just to kind of just level set for the folks that are are leaning into this and learning, kicking the tires. Where are we with Argo? What, what, why was it so popular? What did it do specifically? Did it just make it easier for developers to manage and monitor Kubernetes, keep them updated? What was the specific value behind Argo? Where 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 did it come from, and why is it so popular? Yeah, so Argo, um, the Argo project. Um, which is made up of, of a few tools. Usually when people say Argo, they mean, they, um, they're they talking about Argo CD, but there's also Argo workflows, um, Argo events, Argo notifications, and, and like I said before, CD with that. And that is uh, something that was developed internally at Intuit, right? So um, for those of you who don't know, Intuit um, is the company behind TurboTax. Um, so for the, those of us in the U.S., we, we know we know we know that season all too well, um, <laughs> the tax season, and so um, that was a tool that was developed internally. Um, yeah, and by the way, Intuit, we've done many years. They're very huge cloud adopters. They've been on that train from the day one. They've been they've been driving yeah. a lot of cloud scale too. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, and, and and yeah, no, and 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 also you know they they were um, always open source first, right? So they've always had you know they developed something internally. They always had the uh, the intention of open sourcing it. And so it was really a tool that was born internally, and it was a tool that um, um, helped them, you know, get stuff done with Kubernetes. And that's kind of like the tagline they use for for the Argo project is you, you get stuff done. They wanted their developers to focus less on um, deploying the application and more right more than on writing the application itself. And so the um, and so the Argo project is a suite of tools essentially that helps deploy onto Kubernetes, um, you know, using GitOps as that, um, you know, that cornerstone in design, right? In the design philosophy. Um, it's so popular um, um, because of the ease of use and developer friendliness aspect of it. Um, it's, it, it, it's meant to be simple, right? And, and simple in a, in a good sense yeah. of getting up and running. Um, which attracted, you know, developers from, you know, all around the world, uh, you know, other companies like Red Hat got into it um, as well. Um, uh, BlackRock also is, is, a, is a big contributor, thousands of other independent uh, contributors as well uh, to the Argo project. Yeah, Chris, and you bring up a good point. And I'm going to go on a little tangent here, but I want to get your reaction to mm -hmm. something that uh, Dave Vellante and I and our CUBE team has been kind of riffing on lately. You mentioned, you know, Netflix earlier, you mentioned Intuit. Um, there's a kind of a story that's been developing and, and with traction and momentum uh, and trajectory over the past, say, 10 years. The companies that went on the cloud, like Netflix, Intuit, Snowflake, Snowflake not so much now, but uh, in terms of open source, they're all contributing Lyft, they're all contributing back to open source, but they're not cloud providers, right? So you're seeing that kind of first generation, um, that's a massive contribution to open source. So open source has been around for a while, remember the early days and would all participate on projects. But now you have real companies building IP, going open source first, because they're on a hyperscale cloud, but they're not the cloud themselves. They took advantage of that. So there's kind of this cycle of flywheel of cloud to open source. Not from the vendors themselves, like Amazon Web yeah. Services or Azure, but the people who rode their CapEx and built on that scale feeding into the open source and then coming back. This is kind of an interesting thing. What's your reaction to that? Do you see that yeah. super cloud kind of vibe there? Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and also it, it, I think it's, it's a, um, uh, it's indicative that, you know, open source is not only, um, you know, a way to develop, um, you know, applications, a, a way to engineer, um, you know, your project, but also kind of like a strategic advantage in, 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 in such a way, right? Um, you know, you, you see, you see companies like, like, uh, like even like Microsoft has been going into, you know, open source, right? They, they've been going to open source first. They made a, a huge pivot to, um, you know, using open source as, you know, like, like a, like a strategic direction for, for the company. Um, and I think that goes back to, you know, a, a little bit from my roots, <laughs> you know, I, I, I always, I always talk about, uh, you know, I always talk about Red Hat, right? I always talk about. Um, you know, I was, I was, I was in Red Hat previously and, um, you know, you know, Red Hat being, you know, the first billion dollar open source company, right? I, we always joke is like, well, you know, internally is like, we you know we were a billion dollar company that sold free software. How, you know, how does, how does that happen? But it's, it, it's really, um, you know, built into the community, built into, uh, being able to tap into those expert, uh, resources, yeah. you know, people love using software. People love the software they love using and they want to improve it 
companies are now just getting out of their way. Yeah. You know, companies now essentially it's just like let's just get out of the way. Let's let people work on, um, you know, what they want to work on. They love the software. They want to improve it. Let's let them. It's interesting, a lot of people, oh, the clouds have all this power. If you think about what we're just riffing on and what you just said, the economics and the organic self-governing has always been the open source way where commercial value is mm -hmm. enabled if you play ball right, like Red Hat, for instance. And now you're seeing the community kind of be that arbiter of the cloud. So, hey, if everyone can create value on say AWS or Azure, bring it to open source, everyone benefits across all clouds hope eventually. So the choice aspect comes in. So this community angle is huge. And I think it's changing a lot for the better. And I think this is where we're seeing a lot of that growth. And you guys have been in the middle of it with the Argo project and GitOps specifically in that, in that sector. How have you seen that growth? What some dynamics have you seen? Power dynamics, organic, is it governed well? What's some of the, um, the successes? What are some of the challenges? Can you share your thoughts on the community's growth around GitOps and Argo project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been, um, you know, uh, part of uh, some of these communities, right? Like the, the open Git, uh, GitOps community, the Argos community, um, pretty much from the beginning and, and seeing it develop from an idea to you know, having all these contributors, having you know the the uh, the buzzword come out of it, you know the GitOps and it be that being the um, you know having it you know all over the you know social media, all over LinkedIn, all over all, all these all these different channels. Um, you know, I, I've seen things uh, like GitOps Con, right? So I mean, you know, being part of the GitOps um, uh, Open GitOps community, you know, one of the things we did was we did GitOps Con. It started as a meetup, you know, a couple of years ago. And now, you know, it was, a, you know, we had an actual event at KubeCon in Los Angeles. Um, you know, we had like, you know, about 50 people there, but then, you know, KubeCon in Valencia, this past KubeCon, we had over 200 people. Um, it was the second largest um, co-located event in, in KubeCon. So that just, just seeing that uh, community and you know from a personal standpoint yeah. you know be, be, being part of that that um uh the, the community being um the the, the event chair right yeah. being being one of the co-chairs was it was a moment of pride for me being able to just stand up there and just seeing a sea of people it was like wow we just started with a handful of people at a meetup and now you know we're actually having conferences and and, and speaking of conference like the argo community as well we put in um you know we put on a virtual only event on argocon uh, last year, we're going to do it in person today. Um, you know, this year. Um, um, do you have a date on that? Do you have a date on that? ArgoCon 22? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ArgoCon September 19, 2022. So, um, you know, mark your calendars. Uh, it, it's, um, you know, it's a multi-day event. Um, you know, it's it's part of something else that I've seen in the community where, you know, first we're talk, talking about these meetups. Now we're doing multi-day events where, you know, in talks of the open GitOps, um, you know, GitOps can also make that an, uh, a multi-day event. There's just so many talks and so many people that want to be involved in network that, um, you know, we're saying, well, we're going to need more days because there's just so many people coming to these events, um, you know, and, and, you know, seeing these communities grow, not just from like the engineering standpoint, but also from the end user standpoint, but also from the people that are actually doing these things and, um, you know, seeing some of these use cases, seeing some of the success, seeing some of the failures, right? Like people love, Listening to those talks about postmortems, yeah. I think are part of my favorite talks as well. So, yeah. uh, seeing that community grow is is you know uh, on a personal level, it's 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 a it's, it's a like, point of it's pride. It's like for CSI for software developers. You want to hear yes, about like, exactly. what happened. You know, you know, it's interesting you mentioned about the um, the multiple events at KubeCon. You know, the vibe that's going on is a very festival vibe, right? You have organic groups coming together. I remember when they had just started doing the Day Zero programs. Now you have like almost like multiple stages of content at these events. It feels like like a Coachella vibe or some sort of like festival <laughs> vibe. Like a lot of things going on, and you and if you pick your kind of area, but you can move around. I find that the kind of the format du jour I think is going well uh, these days. What do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It's and and, and <laughs> I, I love that uh, that analogy of Coachella. It does feel like, you know, it's there's something for everyone and you can find what you like and you'll find a little um uh you know a, a little group right a little click of, of of people that's probably the wrong term to use but um you know you you find you know you um you know like-minded people and um you know 
passionate about the same thing, right? Like the security guys, they, you know, you see them all clumped together, right? Like you see the, like the, the developer CICD, GitOps guys, we're all kind of clumped together and start talking, you know, uh, about everything that we're doing. And it's, um, that's, that's, I think that's really something special at KubeCon. Um, you know, some, you know, um, it, it's gotten so big that it's almost impossible to fit everything in a, in, in a week because and there's, there's just so much to do. And there's so much that that interests you know someone, but um, it's a yeah, code, it's a code party is what we call it. It's a code party. Yeah, it's a it's a code party <laughs> for yeah. sure, for well, sure. Nerd nerd fest on on, on steroids. <laughs> hey, I got to get. Uh, I want to wrap this up. And give you the final word, Christian. Thanks for coming on. Mm -hmm. Great insight. Great conversation. Um, this is a huge, you guys are in the middle of a hot area, obviously large scale data growth. Uh, Kubernetes is scaling beautifully and, and making it easier to manage services, what people want. Uh, machine learning is kicking in and, and you get automation building in, all favoring the developer and CI CD pipelining, all that good stuff. People want to learn more. Can you take a minute to put the plug in for CodeFresh on the certification? How do I get involved? Where are you, is there levels? If I want to jump in and get trained and get fluent on CodeFresh, can you share commentary and 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 what the status is? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So CodeFresh is offering a free certification, right? Um, for uh, GitOps, for Argo CD and GitOps, the first of its kind for Argo CD, uh, first of its kind for GitOps is uh, you can actually go get certified um, with uh, Argo CD and GitOps. Um, you know, we the level one is out right now. You can go take that CodeFresh.io/slash/certification. Um, it's out there. Sign up. Um, you know, you, you know, you don't need to pay anything, right? It's it's something. It's a um, of a free course you could take. Level two is coming soon, right? So level two is coming soon uh, in the next few months, I believe. I don't want to quote a specific day, um, but soon. Because I, but soon. I it, it's soon soon as in as in months, right? So you know, we're, we're counting that down. Um, where you can not only level one cert level certification, but a level two more advanced certification for those who have been using Argo for a while, they can still, you know, um, take that and um, be, uh, you know, be able to get, um, um, you know, uh, a, another level of certification for that. So um, also, you know, ArgoCon will be there. We're, we're part of the programming committee um, for ArgoCon, right? This is a community driven event, but, uh, you know, CodeFresh is a proud diamond sponsor. So we'll be there. Um, Where's it located? Talk to us. Except for September 19th, multi-day or one day? It's a, it's a multi-day event. Uh, so ArgoCon from 19, uh, 19, 20 and 21 um, in a Mountain View. So it'll be in Mountain View in the Bay Area. So um, for those of you who are local, you can just drive in. Um, Great, I'm write that down. I'll plug uh, it. I'll yeah, put it in the show yeah. notes. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and uh, you will be there. So you can talk to me. You can talk to anyone else at CodeFresh talking about Argo CD. Um, you know, find, find out more about hosting GitOps, CodeFresh.io. Um, you know, you can find us in the Argo project, open GitOps community. You know, we're, we're, we're deep in the community um, for both Argo and GitOps. So, um, you know, you can find us there as well. Well, let's do a follow up and when you're in town. It's only a couple months away. Uh, getting through the summer, it's already, I can't believe events are back. So it's really great yes. to see face to face. <laughs> Uh, and the community, and they were responding. I mean, you know, KubeCon in October, I think that was kind of on the, <laughs> it was a tough call. And yeah. then good to see your own in Spain. I couldn't make it, unfortunately, I had got COVID, came down with it, but our team was there. Um, open source is booming, continues to go to the next level. New power dynamics are developing in a great way. Christian, thanks for coming on and sharing your insights as the developer experience lead at CodeFresh. Thanks so much. Thank you, John, I appreciate it. Okay, this is theCUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.